This sermon is titled, The Same Jesus, Be Enriched As You Listen. Just want to read a quick testimony uh, that just came in yesterday. So uh, this person wrote in, uh, she said, I would like to share my testimony on healing received through prayer. Uh, since I can remember, I've always had skin allergy. Uh, it started from uh, being there on my face, elbows, and knees. As I grew, it was uh, concentrated to only my palms and hands. And as a result of which, I was not able to do anything, no washing or eating with my hands. Sometimes I could not even hold a pen to write. Uh, my hands would be covered with cuts and sometimes with pus and so on. Uh, so she came for a prayer, uh, it, Easter Sunday, so uh, that's in April. Uh, she came for a prayer. Uh, she was reminded about the fact that Jesus died on the cross and took our sicknesses, and, uh, and so we don't have to live with it. And of course, uh, family and others continued praying. And so she writes in and says, Now there is no allergy on, on my hands. All glory to Jesus. And she also sent in some pictures uh, along with that, the before and after. <laughs> Amen. So, I know it's just one testimony, but what God does for one, He will do for another. Amen. Uh, the works He does, he, he does for everybody. He is no respecter of persons. He is not a partial God. He's an impartial God. His power, His grace, His healing is available for every one of us. Amen? So this Sunday morning, what we're going to do is just take time uh, to encourage us to believe in Jesus, to look to Jesus, and then to pray and expect healings and miracles in our lives. And also those of you who are watching online, right where you are, we want you to open up your heart and expect to receive from the Lord. Amen? And it doesn't matter what condition you know, you may have walked in with, whether it's a physical, emotional, mental, or what you're going through in life, circumstances, situations. I just want us to be like the people in the Bible. They were just simple. They just believed in Jesus Christ. And that's what we should do today as well. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter what, how serious the condition is. It doesn't matter if, you know, uh, the doctors have given their report and they say, look, this is beyond our ability to handle. Today, let's look to Jesus. Same thing, it doesn't matter what your circumstance, situation is, how complex the problem may be. Let's look to Jesus. Amen? So, I want to just remind us about some miracles, and I'm speaking to us from the eighth chapter of Matthew. Just going to recount the miracles recorded in that chapter, encourage our faith, and then we're going to pray together. And our pastors are here as well. They'll join me uh, on, the, uh, on the pulpit here, and uh, we will minister together uh, this morning. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus has just finished preaching at the sermon, uh, the sermon of the Mount on the Mount of Olives, and he's coming down. There's a great crowd of people all around him, and uh, as he's journeying down the hill, a leper comes to him. And the leper, even in those days, was considered an outcast. He's not supposed to be in the crowd, but he somehow heard about Jesus, and he wants to try something. What if I go to Jesus? Maybe he would be willing to heal me. And so even though he was not supposed to do this, he somehow comes through the crowd, and then he presents Jesus with this statement. He says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So that's kind of a question many of us have, and that's kind of how many of us pray. If you are willing, meaning he was not sure he was not so sure if the Lord Jesus was willing to heal. He didn't have a question on his ability. His question was on his willingness. And many of us are like that today. We don't question God's ability. Of course, look at the universe. Look at all that he's done, all the amazing things. God is surely able to heal. God is surely able to deliver. God is surely able to change my situations, my circumstance. The only problem is I don't know if he's willing to do it in my life. That was the issue this leper had. And so he presented his request. He said, Lord, if you are willing... You can 
make me clean. Now Jesus' response is very interesting. Jesus said, I am willing, be clean. I am willing, be clean. He never said, not once, not only in the case of the leper, but in all of the Gospels, you don't find Jesus telling one sick person, it is not God's will to heal you. You don't find Jesus telling one sick person, maybe you need to be sick for a few more days because God needs to sanctify you. You don't find Jesus telling one sick person, maybe this is the will of God for your life. Never. You don't find Jesus doing that. And so Jesus' statement, I am willing, is in Tended to dispel every question this leper had on the willingness of God. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today, if any one of us went to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal my skin problem. Lord, if you're willing, you can heal my arthritis. Lord, if you're willing, you can deliver me from this mental oppression. God, if you're willing, you can heal my degenerative disease or whatever it is. Lord, if you're willing, he will respond the same way. I am willing. Amen? So let there be no question on the willingness of God to make you and me well, to work miracles, to deliver us, uh, to intervene in our life situations. He has not changed. He is the same unchanging Jesus, the same Jesus who is as willing today as he was in Bible times. Amen? So we are the ones who created problems for ourselves by putting a question mark on the willingness of God. He is more willing than we can understand. Amen? So I want us to un get that correct picture of God. Sometimes our picture of God is tainted. It's marred. It's, it's, it's corrupted because of you know, various things we may have experienced or heard or seen. Uh, but today we have a clear picture of God in the person of Christ. Christ always said, I am willing. He never denied somebody on the basis of God being unwilling to heal or to deliver or intervene. And that moment, he stretched out his hand. He has compassion on this uh, leper. He stretched out his hand. He touched him. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Amen? Immediately. Now, we know that sometimes uh, the, the work of healing can take place as a process. It may happen over a few days, like we heard about this, uh, uh, this testimony earlier. But we also know that the healing of the Lord takes place instantaneously. Let's be open for both. Amen? Be open for both. Uh, the best is instantaneous, right? You want that now. Lord can, and of course he can do that. And so we strive for that. God, we want to see that. But if it happens as a process, we're equally thankful. We're equally grateful. The goal is to get well. Amen? And as we continue there, as Jesus ministers his leper and then he continues on, there comes a Roman centurion. Now, this is again a very interesting situation because this man is not a Jewish man. He is not one of those people whom Jesus is focusing his ministry on. He is a Roman centurion. He's part of this whole empire that's actually controlling, dominating, and oppressing the Jews. But surely he's heard about all the miracles of Jesus. He's heard what Jesus has been doing. And he has one of his employees, his servants at home, who's tormented. We don't know what his condition was. Some sort of a paralysis, some sort of a you know, serious problem. So he comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, one of my servants is at home grievously tormented. He's, like, he's in a bad shape. He's suffering a lot. I notice Jesus' immediate response. What does he say? He says, I will come and heal him. Wow. I will come. I'm ready. I will come. Meaning, 
I will get into your home. I will get into your situation. I will go where the person is in need. And today, some of you watching online, you know, you may have somebody in your home, maybe in a bedroom somewhere, uh, who is grievously sick or seriously ill. Jesus would say the same thing to you if you approached him. He would say, I will come and heal. And Jesus didn't say, I will come and offer a prayer. He said, I will come and heal. Now, that's, that, always, that always catches my attention. Jesus didn't say, I will come and pray. He said, I will come and heal. And there's a vast difference. Because sometimes people can come and pray and nothing happens. But Jesus didn't say, I will come and pray. He said, I will come and heal. I will take care of this. I will make that person whole. Look at that complete, absolute assurance of Jesus. I will come and I will heal. Not I might heal, or I will give it a try, or I will offer a prayer, but I will come and heal that person. And Jesus would say the same thing to you and me today, because he is the same unchanging Jesus. Now, it's really remarkable. This Roman centurion says, Lord, you don't even have to come to my house. It's not like he didn't want Jesus to come. But he went, he's expressing his heart. He says, Lord, you don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And then he gives his reasoning, his logic. See, faith is logical. Just that it's a different kind of logic. It's an understanding of something beyond our five senses. It's an understanding that's based on the omnipotence of God, on the greatness of God. So sometimes we think faith is illogical, but actually faith is based on a logic, a different kind of logic. And his logic is very simple. He says, Lord, I am a man under authority. When I tell somebody go, he goes. When I tell somebody come, he comes. In other words, I understand authority. And I recognize you as somebody with authority. So all you've got to do is say the word and it will be done. Amen? Just speak the word and it will be done. And I want us to understand that God has already spoken the word concerning you. Concerning your sickness, God has already spoken. We are not waiting for him to speak, but he has spoken. He has said, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. He has said that his spirit in you gives life to your mortal body. He has said, I am the Lord who forgives your sins and heals your diseases. So he has already spoken. Amen? Amen. He has spoken concerning your need. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want. The Bible says, my God shall supply for all of your need according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. God has already spoken concerning your need. God has already spoken concerning your workplace. He said, whatever you do, your hands, put your hands to, will prosper. He has already spoken concerning your family, your home. He said, in the house of the righteous, there is the voice of rejoicing and salvation. He has already spoken concerning your children. He said your children will be mighty on the earth. God has already spoken. Are you listening? I think you're forced to listen here. <laughs> the question is, can we have faith like the centurion? The centurion simply said, speak the word and it will be done. He has already spoken the word. Now what's remaining is for us to connect with that spoken word. And for you to say personally in your life, God has spoken, so it will be done. It shall be done. Because God has already spoken. God has spoken concerning your life, everything that, he, that ever needs to be spoken. God has completed the work that, of everything that needs to be done. He has already released whatever needs to be released. The matter is not on God's side. The matter is not on our side. See, we make the mistake of saying, 
it's God's turn. God's looking at you and me and saying, I've done everything I need to do. I've spoken. I've completed the work. Now it's your turn. Or as we would say, the ball's on our court. Amen? And so it's a wrong posture to take, saying, I'm waiting for God. And God is saying, I'm waiting for you. Because I've already spoken the word. I've already spoken the word. And this Roman centurion understood the authority that Jesus carried. He said, Lord, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And you know what Jesus said? He said, I have never seen such great faith, not even in all of Israel. See, Jesus called this great faith. What is great faith? It's just saying God has spoken, it will be done. Because his word is backed up by his authority. His word is backed up by all of his sovereign power. Who can stop the Lord God Almighty? Who can stop that word? And all we need to do is to connect with that word with our faith. And great faith is simply this. God has spoken. I believe it. So faith in the word of God. Faith in God's spoken word receives miracles. It receives the healing. It receives the deliverance. It receives the provision. It receives the divine intervention. Faith in God's word receives the miracle. Are you with me? That's what you and I are going to do this morning. Believe that word that God has spoken concerning my life situation. God has already released his word. It's in the Bible. And sometimes God may give you a prophetic word. Sometimes God may give you a word in your spirit. And however it is, if, it, if it's uh, the best is, of course, you go by the written word of God. But there are times in situations and circumstances God gives you a personal word. God has spoken. You know it's going to be done. And you can have complete, absolute faith in that word. And Jesus, after saying, I've never seen such great faith, he tells the saint children, he says, go home or go your way. As you have believed, let it be done for you. As you have believed, let it be done. Today, Jesus will tell you and me the same thing. As you have believed, let it be done. You believe this in your heart, it will be done. It may happen the same instant. It may happen a, a, a few days later. It doesn't matter. The whole thing is settled first in the realm of the spirit. God has spoken. You believed it. He said, as you believed, let it be done. And you say, that's how it's going to be. It's going to be done. Amen? This is what happened in the centurion. And he went home, and he found his servant was healed. Now, another interesting thing you can see in this story or in this incident is there was somebody believing for someone else. The leper came for himself. The centurion came on behalf of somebody else. So, some of us may be sitting here. And uh, you may have a loved one, a family member. Uh, they may be in this city. They may be in some other part of the world. It's okay. You can do what the centurion did on behalf of his servant who was at home. You can do something. You can have faith on behalf of another family member, someone else in any part of this world. God is not limited by geography. So we can do that today as well. Amen. Someone that you care about. That you can have faith, like how the centurion had faith for his uh, employee who was unwell at home. And he was healed. And as we continue, right after that incident, Peter, uh, Jesus goes into Peter's house. So Peter has the privilege of hosting Jesus. I don't know what time of day this was, whether it was lunch, tea, whatever. But Jesus goes in there. And this is home. This is not church at home and Peter's mother-in-law was unwell and the Bible says the Lord touched her 
rebuked her fever and healed her. This miracle happened at home. Jesus still works miracles at home. Amen? Jesus still works miracles anywhere and everywhere. It doesn't have to be a church setting. I mean, thank God that, you know, when we gather together like this, or when we meet in a prayer meeting uh, somewhere, that we can expect miracles to take place. Thank God for that. But what I want to impress on our hearts and minds is, uh, it doesn't have to be a very spiritual setting. It can be a very simple setting at home. It could be in your office. It could be in your classroom. It could be in the mall. It could be somewhere else. But Jesus works with miracles anywhere and everywhere. Amen? He will still do it. You may be at the train station. You may be inside the train. Or you may be in a plane, airplane. It doesn't matter where you are. You may have gone shopping. And you want to buy that beautiful dress for the wedding. Nothing spiritual at all. But that moment you see somebody oh, you know, who recognizes you and they say, Hey, can you please pray for me? Uh, uh, I'm going shopping. I'm not very spiritual. Hey, it doesn't matter. Jesus is there with you. And right that moment, you can pray. You can expect miracles. Because Jesus works miracles at home and everywhere else. Amen? And very interesting. And not only did Peter's mother-in-law get healed at home, but somehow the news spread in town that, hey, Jesus has gone to Peter's house. So that same evening, Matthew chapter 8 records, that the whole city was gathered together at the door. Now, cities in those days weren't that large. So that's why the Bible said the whole city, maybe a few hundred people. You don't know. But everyone in town landed at Peter's house that evening. And they brought with them those who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. Just imagine people lining up at your home and my home with their sick and their oppressed. Would you like that to happen? Oh, God, do that in everybody's house. <laughs> That all our homes be, will become places where people can come and receive a touch of the Lord. They can bring, bring their sick, their hurting, uh, the people who are going through stuff. And they can come to us because Jesus is with us. Yes, he's not there physically, but he's with us. We carry his name. We are called Christians. Amen? People in whom Christ dwells. And so what happen, happens there is... People bring their sick, their demon possessed. They come to Peter's house. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, verses 15, 16. It says, when the evening was come, they brought unto him all who were sick and oppressed and uh, you know, possessed. And it says, he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. He cast out the spirits with a word. Evil spirits were driven out with just a word. That's why when we pray and minister, we say things like, In Jesus' name, I command that spirit of arthritis to leave. Why? Because Jesus did the same thing. He commanded the spirit to leave. Some sicknesses, and not all, but some sicknesses have a demonic spirit that is causing that sickness. Some sicknesses are organic. It's some, some physiological problem. Something's gone wrong physiologically. And some conditions are, happen through accident and other, other causes. But there are conditions that are demonic. There's an evil spirit behind it. And that's why we rebuke spirits. We rebuke spirit of infirmity. We rebuke that spirit. And usually, and I'm not saying always, but chronic conditions and conditions that cannot be treated or they don't appear in, you know, in, in, in medical diagnosis are we usually attribute those things to demon, demonic spirits because spirits don't show up in x-rays and CD scans. So we say, hmm, there's a spirit. So he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. He healed them all. He healed all. And he does the same thing today. I want to emphasize, he healed all. Not a few. Not a selected few, 
he healed all. And it's very interesting in, in, in as Matthew, the gospel writer, is writing this account of that day in the life of Jesus. At that moment, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the gospel writer Matthew interjects his commentary or his record of Jesus' day with a scripture from Isaiah. He says, Jesus healed the people and he delivered them from demonic evil works, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Now, if you go back in time and read Isaiah 53, it's a chapter that the prophet Isaiah foretold about 750 years approximately before Christ actually died on the cross. And Isaiah 53 is a chapter that, that details what Christ did on the cross 750 years in advance. And as part of what Christ did on the cross, Isaiah is telling us, Jesus took our sicknesses and bore our diseases. And here, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the gospel writer Matthew is saying, the reason Jesus healed all these people who came to Peter's house, and the reason Jesus delivered them from demonic powers is because he was fulfilling what Isaiah said he would do on the cross. But Jesus had not yet gone on the cross. But remember, everything that happened before the cross was given to people as a down payment, as an advance payment. So people received forgiveness for their sins. People received healing for their sicknesses. People were delivered from demonic powers in view of what Jesus was going to do on the cross. The payment was going to be made. So we can clear your debt right now in advance. But think about it. You and I are living on the other side of the cross. The payment has been paid. Deliverance has been provided. Healing has been given. So today, how much more and how much greater confidence you and I can have saying, Jesus took my sins. He bore my diseases, so I don't need to bear it in my body. Are you listening? Because that's the basis for our healing. That's the basis for our deliverance. In as much as the cross is the basis for the forgiveness of our sins, the cross is also, also the basis for the healing of our bodies, the healing of our minds, the deliverance from every demonic power. The cross is the basis. Are you listening? Because he did the work on the cross. He defeated Satan and every demonic power on the cross. He took our sicknesses and diseases so that we don't have to bear it. So Matthew is writing. Inspired by the Holy Spirit says, the reason Jesus healed is because he did it on the cross. Amen. And so after that time, uh, I don't know whether it was the same day or the next day. Jesus and his disciples, they get into the boat. And Jesus says, let's go over to the other side. So a little mission, mission trip. Okay, Jesus, we're ready for the mission trip. Pack the bags, I don't know, or maybe they just went like that. They got into the boat and they started sailing. Jesus getting some rest and there was a storm. And Jesus calms the storm. It alarmed the disciples. Got them afraid. But Jesus calms the storm. Amen. Jesus works miracles over the elements of nature and in our natural life situations. Amen. What is the situation you're going through? It could be like this. Maybe they were on, uh, you know, they were caught in the middle of a storm. Or it could be something else in life. A situation, whatever it is. A stormy, disruptive, difficult, troubling situation. It could be a financial situation. It could be a situation at home. It could be a relational situation. It could be a situation in the workplace. It could be having to do with your job or your career, whatever. It could be something so difficult. Jesus works 
miracles, even in those situations. Amen? And some of you today sitting here or watching online, you may be in a situation like that. I want to encourage your faith that you and I can reach out to Jesus and say, Lord, in my situation, calm my storm. Let the wind cease and the waves come so that, God, I can see a miracle in my situation that can continue on in my journey. Amen? He works miracles over nature and natural situations and uh, circumstances. The last miracle that we see recorded there for us. So when he gets over to the other side, he has an unusual welcome to demon-possessed men waiting to greet Jesus on the other side. And perhaps he was directed that way by the Lord to get and go there um, to the region of the Gadarenes, maybe. But when Jesus comes there, here are these two demon-possessed men. Men. Troubled by demons. Now, the reality is this. There are evil spirits at work in our world. Some people deny it. They don't want to talk about the devil. They don't want to talk about, you know, that there is this dark world of unseen, of wicked spirits and so on. They just deny it completely. But some of us have actually seen people manifest seen these demons talk. You cannot give any kind of scientific, psychological explanation for that. So the answer is very simple. Come and see. If you deny it, just come and see. Come and see a demon-possessed person who's manifesting, who's troubled, who's oppressed. Come and see. And then it will change all arguments instantly. And so here comes this demon, two demon-possessed men. And they immediately recognize who Jesus is. You see, in the natural, these men had no idea who Jesus is. So it wasn't that they went, they got some great education to know who Jesus was. But the spirits inside them knew who Jesus was. Have you come to torment us before the time, you son of God? They knew who Jesus was. You know, and they said, you know, uh, obviously there's a time and God is going to bind up all these spirits. So now they ask permission, just let us get into the swine. Okay, go. And so you had these demons go right into all these animals. They went over the cliff and into the sea and died. But these two men were delivered, completely set free in an instant. You see now, Evil spirits torment people. They can trouble people in the mind, causing fear and oppression, depression, suicidal tendencies, uh, terrible things that take place in the mind. Evil spirits can also trouble, like I said earlier, the physical body, causing sicknesses, ailments. Evil spirits can also possess people. And a believer cannot be possessed, but I'm talking about in general, a person. An unsaved person can be possessed, meaning their will can come under the control of the spirit. And so the, these spirits express themselves through the person. And you cannot deny these things. People suffer from these things. But thank God Jesus delivers us from every form of demonic activity. Amen? Worship team, please come. Jesus delivers us. Pastors, you also please come and join me. Jesus delivers us from every form of demonic work. Whether it's an oppression in your mind or your body. Sometimes they engage in, 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 in circumstances and situations as well. Causing trouble, causing problems. But today, Jesus Christ is waiting to deliver you and me. Amen. Doesn't matter. What your situation is, today, Jesus is more than able to minister to you. Whether it was a leper, the Roman centurion, whether it was the, uh, Peter's mother-in-law at home, or the crowd that came and showed up at the door, or whether it was a 
storm in the sea or whether it was these demon possessed men. It's all a clear indication to you and me that the Lord Jesus we serve is a miracle working, saving, healing, delivering Jesus. Amen? Why can't we see the same things today? Why can't we see the same things today? And He's ready to do that for you and me. All we need to do is to reach out in faith and say, Lord Jesus, you are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my miracle worker. We cry out. We reach out. We connect by faith. Amen. He is impartial. He will do this for anyone and everyone. All who came to him received. All who came to him received. So what we're going to do is we are going to pray and have faith like the Roman centurion. Have faith in God. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has already spoken the word. And we connect. He'll do it. He can heal anything. There might be genetic disorders. He can set those genes right in an instant in every cell in the body. There might be speech impediments, problems in our speech, and you're not able to speak properly or some other problem there. He'll heal that. Chronic illnesses, he'll heal. Arthritis, he'll heal. Degenerative degenerative problems with the nerves and so on he will heal, he will restore he's the God who made our bodies he knows how to fix it amen he knows how to fix it he made our whole body he knows how to fix it let's reach out by faith what we're going to do is first we're going to lead people in what we call as a salvation prayer what is a salvation prayer? It's if, if somebody has never received Jesus into their lives, we encourage people to do that. The Bible tells us to do that. The Bible says, as many or anyone who received him, who received Jesus, to them he gives the power to become the children of God. See, it's very simple. If you want your sins forgiven, receive the one who forgives sins. If you want your body healed, receive the one who heals the body. If you want to be free from demonic powers, receive the one into your life who sets us free from demonic powers. When he comes in, that problem's got to go. Very simple. So, that's why we say, you know, Jesus finished the work for you and me on the cross when he died for our sins and took all our sickness and disease, but we need to receive Him. He died and He rose up again. He's alive today and we receive Him. And you receive Him, the one who forgives, the one who heals, the one who delivers, the one who works miracles, comes into your life. And you're ready to experience His work in your life. So that's the first step. And if there's anyone here in the auditorium who've never received Jesus, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer to receive Jesus, to forgive your sins, to come in as your healer, your deliverer, your miracle worker, to come in and be all that He is. I can give you an opportunity to do that. The same for those of you who are watching online. If you've never received Jesus, welcoming Him in to be Jesus in you, to believe in Him, to love Him, to follow Him. If you've never done that, I want to help you in a small prayer to receive Jesus. And after that, we will pray. We will sing, we'll pray. I'm not sure what we'll do, but we'll, we'll pray. And I want you to expect the Lord to touch you. I want you to, I want you to expect a miracle right here, right now. See, the leper was healed instantly. The Roman centurion's employee was healed immediately. Peter's mother-in-law was healed immediately. The 
the storm in the sea calmed immediately and the demons left those demoniacs immediately. Amen? That's pretty good consistency. Five out of five. Why can't he do it today? Surely he can. Right? So that's the level that we need to expect. Now, if it happens as a process, thank God for it. We're not against that. But let's expect the immediate, our expectation. Lord, right here, right now, I want to see a miracle. And what we'd like to do is that we'll have mics available. If a miracle happens in your body, like for example, if you came in with pain in your leg, you found it difficult to walk, and that leg becomes fine, don't sit there and go home quietly. Please come forward and say, this is what the Lord did for me right here, right now. Right? We'd like to celebrate with you. we like to see the works of God take place right here, right now. Right? So if a miracle happens right here, right now, come forward and testify. Now, if you need to get yourself checked medically, please do that. Right? So we're not pressuring you to come and testify right now. That's not the purpose. What we are saying is if there is a definite miracle take, that takes place now, come forward and testify so we can all celebrate together. There are certain conditions. You need to go back to the doctor. You need to let them check. You may need to do a scan or some other tests or some, some conditions that you may need to test it out yourself over a few days. All that is fine. We encourage you to do that. And then you send your testimony. So we are fine both ways. But what I want to encourage is if there's something happens right here, right now, for example, if there was a tumor and, 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 and that growth that was external and that disappeared, you know it's gone. So you can come and testify. But if there's a tumor inside and you don't know, then you need to go and do a scan and get it checked and then testify. Are you with me? Right? So we want to be open and let the Lord do unusual things today in our midst. Let him work wonderful things in our midst because the Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. Amen. If you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, I want you and you would like to do it this morning, just say the simple prayer with me. Could we just bow our heads for a moment, please? And those of you watching online, if you've never received Jesus into your life, I want to invite you to say the simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive my sins. Make me a new person. Make me a child of God. Be Jesus in me. And help me to follow you and you alone all the days of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone here? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time in your life. We just want to celebrate with you. We want to recognize that you've done this this morning. So if you don't mind, could you raise your hand, please? Anyone, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. You received Jesus right here, right now. Just raise your hand with me so I can see it. And uh, we also want to celebrate with you. And, uh, and uh, I can't, is anyone here? Just wave your hand. I want to see it. Okay, I see one person right there. Anyone else? Anyone else? We don't want to miss anybody. You pray this prayer with me right here, right now, for the first time in your life. Anybody else? Anyone else? Is there somebody else? Way out there or somewhere there? Oh, just, oh God bless you. Yes, yes, right here. All right, so our greeters will come and give you a bag of resources. Uh, that's called a new believers bag. And there's a card that you can write your name and number and just hand it back to them and we will... Somebody will call you from the church office and guide you how to use the resources in that bag. Anybody else, you prayed this prayer right here, right now, for the first time in your life. We just want to celebrate with you. Okay, thank God for these two people. Let's give God good praise. Father, thank you. Thank you for every person who makes that decision to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, 
We're going to rise to our feet at this moment. We're going to just sing a song. Worship team will lead us. And uh, do what the centurion did. You say, Lord, you have already spoken the word. You've already spoken the word. Centurion said, just speak the word. But God has already spoken the word. He said, by his stripes you were healed. He said, he'll bless you in all the work of your hands. He said, he will be your provider. My God will supply for all of your needs. You know, God has already spoken the word. So take a hold of that word. As you sing this song, take a hold of that promise. It's a precious promise. And then we're going to pray together. Our pastoral team here will pray, will minister, will as the Spirit leads, will pray. And, and just be open to what the Lord does. Let's take a few minutes to sing, please. That he loved thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the God. Thank you, God. I'm just going to invite our pastors. Just feel free to minister. We'll pass the mic around as well. They may have a word of knowledge. They may, uh, the Lord would, you know, speak something to them. And as they release it, I want you to connect with that and say, yes, it's me. And pray. And don't worry if your condition is not called out. God heals all sicknesses, all diseases. And we will pray. We will pray. Please go ahead. Take, take this time. Anyone? sense that there are, there are some of us who have been having calcium deficiency in your bodies and it's been many years I'm just reminded of in Luke, Luke chapter 8 the woman with the issue of bleeding she had lost hope it's been 12 years she's just been waiting maybe you resound with that just waiting. God, everyone else have been getting their miracles. Everyone else have been getting their healing. But I have not yet. Just want to speak a word of encouragement. And just pray healing right now. Maybe if there's somebody here, if you uh, calcium deficiency in your body. Uh, it's been years. 
uh, and maybe you're in a place of hopelessness. Anyone here you identify with that? One person, anyone else? Just raise your hand, please. Anybody else? Another person? Anyone else? Just raise your hand, please. Well, it's just, you know, you relate to this word. You know, yeah, that I have that condition. Another one per person, three, at least three people. Good. Let's just pray for them right yes. now. Go ahead, Paul. Yes. Just go ahead. Yes. Also, uh, maybe some of us can just come, place the, uh, hands on them. Just, just declare healing. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. You want to come next to them, others, just as believers. The Bible, Jesus said, Jesus. in my name, believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So just go stand next to them because we are here on the stage. But, you know, believers, just go stand next to the person, uncle there. Just stand next to them. Here, uh, uh, here, here. Just, just put your hand. Just, just pray with them. Just pray with them. And, you know, let's just pray. Okay, go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come together. We join our hearts together in faith, oh God. And we pray for our brothers and sisters here, oh God, who are going through this deficiency, calcium deficiency in their body. We speak in the name of Jesus. We speak healing. We speak restoration, oh God. We speak hope where there's hopelessness of God Lord we just declare the power of your Holy Spirit upon their lives right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we just declare healing of God Lord your word says that by your stripes we are healed of God and Lord we stand on that promise we stand on that word of God and right now let the power of your hand of God be upon them right now let them experience your anointing Oh, from, the, from their head to their toes, oh God. Let them experience the power of your presence right now in Jesus' name. Every calcium deficiency, every, every pain in the joints, in the knees, in the ankles, in the fingers. Lord, we just pray healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We come against every spirit of doubt that has been just saying that this healing cannot happen i just speak against that in jesus name lord we thank you that healing is our portion yeah. healing is our authority oh god yes. you have given it given it to us lord yes. you have finished the work on the cross oh yes. god and lord we receive it as your children this morning yes. oh god each one of them here oh god mm. even as they stand in faith oh god we just thank declare you. healing in the name of Jesus, hey. Father, we thank you that you shed your blood. The price has been paid, oh God. And we thank you, God, even as, Lord, maybe they've been waiting for so many years, maybe in a place of hopelessness. Right now, God, we just declare that Hebrews 11, oh God, which says that faith is a substance of things hoped for. Oh. Lord, we just declare, we just, we just pray for hope to rush into their spirit, oh God faith to just just pour into their hearts right now that they will receive that healing thank in you. jesus name we just declare god we thank you yes. we thank you god we will we will hear a report of god yes. that you have done your work as you have promised to oh father mm. we thank you lord yes. we thank you in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. okay so pastors just just call out the condition and we'll pray one prayer final prayer together right so we'll have uh, others will each one might be too long so just mention the condition raise a hand we'll call out all the conditions then we'll pray together go ahead Jane. um so if any of you just move to ask if there's anyone who suffers with allergies uh, morning allergies where your uh, antihistamine has become your strong companion does anyone allergies, just allergies raise your hand. any kind of allergies yeah, a few couple of here okay. anyone else just raise your hand Okay, I have a second pray. one. This is a pretty ahead, funny one. But if any of you are praying for go. a pet who's been ill, um, anybody paying, praying for a pet, pet love, any, anyone who's praying okay. for I a pet. I know this is a little embarrassing, but <laughs> you've been praying for a pet, dog, no, Not cat. praying for a pet, someone who's, uh, the pet is unwell. Uh, a pet the pet is unwell. unwell. And Okay, we have a few. Anyone else? Yeah, okay. There's, There's one, one more there. there. There's one more there. Okay, at least three people. Okay, good. Any others? Thing? Benny, come on, mention. We're going to pray for all of this together in the end, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, anyone with uh, conditions on your bone, bones, um, arthritic conditions, uh, any conditions in the bones? Yeah, this one there. Okay, so we have people with problems in the bone. Okay, just raise your hand. Thank you. you can put your hands down. Yeah. Anything else, Benny? Uh, stomach Selena? ulcers, anyone suffering with stomach ulcers, 
problems in your stomach. Or online stomach ulcers, and also somebody who's coming to this place totally broken. Um, you know, you are like uh, in a desert-like situation, and uh, you've just given up all hope. And the Lord is saying, like Hagar, who was in the desert-like condition, God says, "I see you. I know what you're going through." And uh, God is a God who restores the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted. Okay. Do you, is there people here who relate to those two things? Selena said, uh, stomach ulcers, stomach problems. Secondly, just a sense of hopelessness. Just raise your hand. We just just want to know that you know, God is speaking. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Anyone else? Sorry. Okay. I see that. See that. Okay. Anyone else? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Paul? Um, Joshua? Yeah. No. One. Sorry. Okay. Uh, anybody who's uh, struggling with joint pains, especially knee pain and back pain, uh, that's one. And another one, uh, uh, anybody struggling with depression, like I really feel that the Lord is just lifting that right now. Pain in the joints, knee. Just raise your hand just quickly. Yeah, so we see people. Depression, I think we see just quickly. Yeah, see those hands there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can put, them hand, put your hands down. Anything else? Um, just felt like there is someone, uh, there's maybe more than one, uh, somebody who's upset about uh, the word of the Lord for the year uh, not coming true for you, you know, conquering your giants. And uh, maybe it's, uh, it's, it's a battle that uh, you've been, been fighting. Um, and you're asking the Lord, uh, Lord, is this ever going to happen? And I'm, uh, I feel like the Lord's saying, He is fighting your battles. And He wants you to fight your giants. It's not over. I feel like he, he wants to say that to you, that it's not over. He's fighting with you. And he wants to fight. Uh, he wants, wants you to help you win your battles. Yeah. Anyone, you relate to that? I, I'm not going to come and check your hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, I see your hand. see your hand there. Anyone else? We're just saying, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See, I see your hands. Okay, thank you. All right. So all of us, you know, you saw that, you know, these words that were called out uh, in the Bible, you say, like, why are these people doing this? I, it's not part of the liturgy. Yeah, it's because it's in First Corinthians chapter 12. The Bible talks about words of knowledge, prophecy, the gifts of the Spirit, which are in the church, and we just give opportunity to, to release them, right? And it can happen through all of us as believers, not just the pastors who stand here, but it can happen to all of us. The Holy Spirit releases these gifts, words of knowledge and prophecy and gifts of healings and working some miracles. And so we just give opportunity for us to do that. What we're going to do now is we're all going to pray together. Amen? So we're going to pray together. They have called out these words. Uh, uh, you believe God. Maybe there's a situation or a condition that has not been called out. It's okay. He forgives all our sins. He heals all our diseases. Right? But these words of knowledge encourage our faith. Uh, these words of prophecy encourage our faith. Uh, and that's why we, you know, we, God has put them in the church. Let's all pray together, right? Let's all pray together. Uh, I will ask uh, maybe one of, uh, Benny, who has the mic? Uh, just go ahead, you pray. Then uh, I will pray after that. And if anything happens right now, please come forward uh, to share your testimony, right? Just check your body. If you can see a visible change, a recognizable change, a real change, come forward and we will take your testimony. Let's take a few moments to pray. We'll take testimonies and then we'll close. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And thank you, Lord, that you are the God who heals us. And we just declare your word, oh Lord. We just receive your word right now into our bodies. Lord, into uh, the Lord, we just declare the health that you have spoken over us, oh God. Right now, we receive that into our bones, Lord, into our, uh, uh, every organ of our bodies right now, in Jesus' name, and we receive that healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're the one who encourages us. You're the one who, who helps us fight our battles, oh God. And we receive your grace to, to do that right now. Lord, in the, in, the, in the weeks to come, in the days to come, oh God, we receive your grace to fight our battles, O oh Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Let's all pray together. Father, we thank you for every word that was released, Lord, every word of knowledge, every prophecy, every encouragement that was released from here. Thank you for those who could connect to each and every word that was 
spoken father right now in the name of jesus we pray for every person with a need whether it's healing in their body whether it's healing in their mind whether it's a miracle in their circumstances and situations we join our hearts together today in the name of jesus and we command healing we command bodies to be healed. We take authority of every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of blindness, every spirit behind sicknesses and diseases, speech impediments, degenerative diseases, chronic conditions, arthritis, and every other condition of us called every demonic spirit. We expel you in the name of Jesus. And we command healing right now in the bodies of God's people, even those watching online, be healed right now, wherever you are. Begin to check your body. Begin to look for healing taking place in your body. Some of you might feel a warmth. You might feel a sensation. That's God's power moving on your body. You might feel a heat tingling. You might feel a, a, a warmth or a, just a different sensation. It's an indication that God's power is moving through your body. Sometimes it feels like a liquid, warm, a uh, warm liquid just coming over your body. Uh, uh, and that's a sensation of the presence of God coming over you to heal you. Begin to yield yourself to it and receive your healing. Father, we speak into the people's situations, their life situations. Jesus, you're the miracle worker. You turned water to wine. You calmed the storms. You brought money in the mouth of a fish. Lord God, do those miracles, same miracles and more. Lord, we pray that supernaturally you will cause money to come into people's bank accounts supernaturally God you will bring provision that cancels debts that moves out to the mountain of debt father for those who have not received jobs for a long time supernaturally bring a provision of job into their lives let somebody call them and offer them a job Lord God even those who are waiting 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 let them receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ God we declare you are the miracle worker you are the provider you are the healer God we pray for reconciliation in in relationships in relationships that are hurting God let there be a change of heart and mind so people are recon reconciled even in the workplace relationships but there has been hatred and animosity and sometimes Lord even arguments and hostility let it change let it turn around in the workplace that the people will be reconciled they'll work harmo harmoniously in the name of Jesus father we give you thanks we give you praise and we release God's healing power we release God's miracle working power into the lives of people and we thank you for it and everybody said in Jesus name amen 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 Amen. Let's just give God some praise. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you praise. All right. Anybody, you've experienced a miracle, something right here, right now. We want to take a, a moment just to, you know, just share your testimony. All right. No pressure, but we want to acknowledge something that when God does it. All right. So if you feel like God did something for me, just come forward. We'll give you a mic and just, you can share it. If there are no testimonies, then benediction. Anyone here? Something God did something for you right here, right now. Maybe, you know, a joint where there was pain. Come on forward. Come, come. Paul, uh, can you share the mic for them? Come on. Please share what happened. You know, maybe there was a joint pain. That pain is gone. You know, hey, testify. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, so when they were praying, I was feeling a little bit shy to lift my hand <laughs> because I have this uh, shoulder pain. Uh, I, I was sitting there with shoulder pain and then they said about calcium deficiency. Then I remembered that uh, my ortho doctor, he said like, uh, I have uh, some issue like beginning of spondylitis. Uh, my uh, shape of the bones became like beaked shape. So it's a, a different shape of the bone uh, due to some calcium deficiency. And also I, I don't have a vitamin, uh, enough vitamin D. So calcium is not getting absorbed. How's your shoulder now? Uh, I, after the prayer, I felt... Uh, Let I me felt hold your mic and you move your shoulder. <laughs> uh, my shoulder is fine. Your shoulder is fine. No pain. No pain. Absolutely no yes. pain. Okay, show, show us all. Move your hand, move your shoulder. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Something happened to you right here, right now. And uh, we just want to, I don't know which one is working. 
Uh, something happened to you right here, right now. Come on forward, come on forward quickly. A joint, so your pain is gone completely, and the calcium thing, you can go definitely go get your test done. God will do, take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us what the problem was, and how are you feeling right now? Yeah, my problem was that I came from a Hindu background, so how much ever I try, I always felt like I'm not perfect before the Lord. And I wanted that healing, God, that I'm totally forgiven and uh, mm. I'm totally restored and that joyful joy. It mm. was like up and down. And today I felt like when I was, you were saying that all the sins are forgiven. Mm. And I felt something is gone from me. Wonderful. And I'm so happy Wonderful. today. Thank you. Praise Amen. God. For Amen. This. Amen. Amen. So the Bible calls it the joy of our salvation. Amen. So she experienced the joy of her salvation. Thank you for sharing that. Wonderful. Anybody else? Something God did for you right here, right now? Uh, you know, just, just want to share that. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. That's fine. So now, you know, go home. Uh, over time, you know, uh, you can recognize, you know, so many things that were called out. Maybe you need to get the doctor to check you or may do some tests do that right verify your healing and then share it with us you know send a testimony send an email to testimony at apcw.org tell others about it and encourage others and always remember the goodness of god amen you know just i close with this jesus fed five thousand people the disciples saw that 12 baskets full everything a little later they were again on another situation where there were crowds of people. And you know what the disciples did? They were worried, how are we going to feed them again? And you know what Jesus, Jesus told them? He said this, Do you not remember? Do you not remember? In other words, hey, there's a miracle happened some time ago, very recently. There you're worried again, another situation. And Jesus told them, don't you remember what I did? In fact, he asked them, how many baskets did you take? <laughs> Everyone took one basket home. They forgot. <laughs> how many baskets did you collect? So the point is the simple point. Don't forget the miracles. Every time you find yourself in another situation where you need a miracle, remember the miracle or miracles he has done. Remember. Do you not remember? You know, hey, God has done so many. Remember those things. It will encourage us when we find ourselves in another situation where we need a miracle. So Jesus said, remember. Remember how many baskets you took home. Remember that. And maybe, maybe never forget the goodness of God. Amen. We are going to close and uh, our pastors will be available here in front if you need you know, personal prayer, just feel free to come. One thing I forgot to mention, today we have a VIP banquet. Correct? Yeah, it was right. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, today we have VIP banquet, which is, for those of you who are new to church, uh, you know, you've just started coming here. It's an opportunity for you to come and just meet our pastors. We provide lunch. So if this is your very first Sunday, or you've been attending as a visitor, and you want to get to meet the pastors, spend time with us, Today, right after service, VIP banquets happening in the food court. Those of you regular people, we love you, but this is not for you. <laughs> this is only for new people, right? You're new to the church. You come, uh, you spend time with the pastors. All our pastors will be here. There'll be a little presentation about the church. You can ask questions, have lunch with us, uh, just get to know us, okay? Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcw.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.